Welcome to Captured by Women. I'm Elizabeth Olympio Emmanuel. I'm joined today by my co host. I am Sarah Safoji, real estate developer and passionate sports enthusiast. And I'm lawyer Amanda Clinton, a private legal practitioner. Here's a quick recap of our show last week. Since June 2018, if they had applied for a renewal, probably by this time they'd have gotten their renewal. NC has waited July, August, September, October, October November, December, January, February, March, April, 10 months. And you are still saying that NCA is being, what, uh, uh, is being unfair? So do you okay. think the political... Can I, can I, like, can I During like, this period of the lobby, I was trying to mentally appraise the security of TV3. I didn't see much. I saw these young ladies in uniform, and I was asking myself, if there is an attack in the form of a rush, I'm dressed up, uh, what are you coming for? I've been invited for a program. Then they use the mirror, you know, to scan the belly of my vehicle. They allow me in. Who tells you that? In this episode captured by women, the incidents of violence and commotion at the recent Vodafone Ghana Music Awards, brandishing of guns, pepper jet sprays, saturating the air, mob-like activity, and a near stampede. Should Ghanaians expect better security at events that they are paying to attend? And should the Ghana police lay out standard security procedures for such public events? There appears to be a lot of uncertainty in the world economy today. The Brexit debacle has made nervy spectators of us all. And now tech giant Google has pulled Huawei's license following an executive order by US President Donald Trump, which will see Huawei's devices denied access to Android apps. What will this mean for dealers and users of Huawei phones and devices in Ghana? And is there an opportunity in the Malay for local app developers? The spin is up next when we return from the break. China-Ghana relations. It seems China wants a lot of our raw materials. How are we going to tackle this? How do we bargain uh, efficiently, effectively, to make sure we are not at the short end of the stick? Um, I think they're taking too much of the cake. How do we go about this? But how, how, do you, how do you quantify how much they're taking of the cake? Because we are getting something for it. It's not like we are not getting anything. We are getting the real way. And the real way is not, it just doesn't, you don't build the real way and it ends there. It creates jobs. It, it facilitates movement of goods. It facilitates, in fact, in the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, which the Chinese also, the same right. company. I hear that it has shortened the time for exporters to get their goods to, to the port. Horn of Africa. Okay from what was previously about three weeks to three days, door to door. And that is saving them so much, it's pushed up their export market. So there are certain advantages to getting a quality railway built for you. But is it worth giving away so much of our raw resource, uh, raw materials? Raw yes. materials? Perhaps not, but then perhaps we can also learn from what China did when it started engaging with America for year upon year, you know, giving America great deals in terms of trade. Um, but whilst they were engaging with them, they were really studying, you know, what is the American way of thinking and doing business and agreements and being the person at the top end of the deal. And slowly but surely, they learned enough to sort of almost turn the tables around if they haven't yeah. turned the tables around already. They have, they have turned it so around. So industry yeah. is always a great opportunity, I, th I think particularly for Ghana, um, to really understand. And, and at the end of the day, this is our country. You know, sovereignty means we can just kick people out if we want, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> if the deal is that bad for us. But for this time, I think it is also good to trade and to have clauses in those agreements. You know, don't send people to China who aren't reading and being entertained for two weeks and they sign anything. Send people who will be quite serious about signing these deals. 
um, that's a very important lesson to learn. So perhaps send women because you know they're not going to be distracted as much. <laughs> Knowledge transfer. <laughs> you know, with, with the building of the railway sector, I haven't yeah. read the agreement um, as it's been signed. But I'm hoping that there's knowledge transfer and um, our engineers and technicians will be going to China to train. And uh, because the maintenance, once they build it, it's the Chinese that are building the no, railway. No, no, the, there's transfer of knowledge for the maintenance. And for the, the maintenance yes. aspect. I believe that was factored in. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we're not going to keep the Chinese here just to maintain the trains. But after they've trained local staff, sufficiently hopefully we'll be able to continue to continue that and they're taking raw materials perhaps we could also look at the raw materials being processed to a certain yes. point before yes. it is taken away like yes. so it's not like the ore or the gold that was, yes. that was taken our cocoa. away our yes. cocoa. we need to get it to one process point so we have added value mm -hmm. uh, to it before it goes away in this case it's bauxite isn't it that Bauxite, yeah, yeah. Is the deal. Which is it's, it's very capital intensive to mine any kind of ore. So we have to get to a point where we can afford to take these raw materials out of the ground ourselves, ourselves. and, as you say, process them and then sell them as a finished product rather than more or less giving them away at a very cheap price yeah. because we can't afford to take them out ourselves. And in, and in the process of taking it out, we also do not monitor them so they then degrade the environment and do not replace what they dig up. That, that is what I disagree. Most mining, you see, separated, most mining companies that are working properly, yes. they do always have a reforestation program in program. place if necessary. If you talk about illegal mining and these fly-by-night companies, that's a diff diff different. The small, the fish. small scale and medium scale miners, they do not have a reforestation plan. They do. It's not enforced. It's not they enforced. Do. So it's it about falls back on the authorities to ensure that they monitor and enforce what the clauses uh, put in place. And, and it's regarded agreement. to be strategic, you yes. know. I mean, we've been at this sort of negotiation table time and time again, and then after the negotiation table. We know the sort of things that can happen. Yeah. So it really is, you know, for, for the Ghanaian government, for this yeah. one, and if it's another one soon, another one, to really be strategic with how we manage such a massive deal in terms of the railway um, project. And then to have this much bauxite, you know, leaving yeah. the country, how do um, we manage that as well? And are we going to be focusing on other sectors that will allow us to precisely, be able to get rid of this? Considering our raw materials are not bottomless, we do not know how much there is. So we need yeah. to start being innovative and looking at other uh, lucrative uh, mm -hmm. opportunities. It's been six decades since independence and we cannot still be bargaining mm -hmm. on our raw materials. Yes, what would be sad and ironic is if we end up buying the finished product from our own bauxite from China. <laughs> Which is already happening. Really? Oh, for some of the items, it is happening. They send it out and they bring it back and we buy them so easy. <laughs> Maybe it's time for, you know, the government to invest in our youth in terms of science, technology, um, engineering and so forth. Because yeah. an investment has been made in the youth for that. But I think, you know, America is learning from China and they really are in putting a lot of money on science and technology for the youth in terms yes. of like everywhere from like a three-year-old yeah. um, going to a science technology lab um, upwards because they realize the future is in technology. Yeah. So it's away from these sort of like natural resources, even though that's a great deal, perhaps if we manage it well, but also it's about science and technology and being great thinkers. Artificial intelligence. Artificial, Artificial intelligence, intelligence, intelligence and being great thinkers of the future. I mean, there are lessons to be learned from China for sure. Because as you say, they've, they've transformed themselves from a very poor country, an agricultural-based company, into, I mean, Techno undeniably giant. the technology giant of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And manufacturing, so yeah. maybe we should... And AI leaders, artificial intelligence <laughs> leaders. So. When they come, we shouldn't just let them come. We should learn. We should learn and should see how learn. we can do it better mm -hmm. going forward. Like they learned from America. We should similarly learn. Yeah. Up next, we look at security at public events in Ghana. Personally, I, I am of a view that event organizers owe a duty of care to their patrons. But whose job is it actually to keep us safe when we attend public functions? 
We are privileged to be joined by ACP David Senanu Eklu, the Director General of the Public Affairs Unit of Ghana Police Service. Sir, welcome to Captured by Women. Thank you. Okay. First of all, I must ask about the recent Ghana Music Awards, and obviously we all know what happened there. It was very unfortunate, and we'd like to take your thoughts and impressions on, on what happened, what possibly could have been done differently, and how it should have been handled. Um, thank you, and then um, I want to thank you for giving us this platform to at least have a discussion on issues that have been of topical concern, as probably we did last week, in the respect of the event that happened and in the fallout. Um, there was a breach of the peace, clear breach of the peace, uh, during that event. And uh, for now, the police is enforcing the law. Those we suspect would have caused the breach of the peace are before court. And the case has been called, they are on court bail now. And by next month, they will, go, they will make the second appearance before court. But beyond that, this event has raised a lot of issues about security during public events. And the responsibilities of the organizers and the responsibility of the Ghana Police Service, which has the constitutional mandate to protect life and property. So it is good that it has been captured by our women on this, on this program, and we are discussing it as an issue that would uh, help all of us going forward. Okay. So how much responsibility would you place on the event organizers? I mean, it, they, they charge money for these events. Yeah. They hire security. Yeah. I don't know, I saw some police presence. I don't know if those are official, yeah. officially requested or is the police that mm -hmm. offer their services. Mm -hmm. um, I do know that what happened couldn't have been predicted, yeah. but from people who were there, they said there was clearly, it was leading towards it because as the night wore on to collect their awards, Performers were going with two people at first, then it became three, five, next time ten. At that point, I feel that the security should have stepped in and said, this is a possible um, indication. Indication. That might be the things, the yes. Case, yeah. Oh, and there's a gun check. I mean, a gun check yeah, as you um, enter such a, a venue, perhaps. Yes, um, you asked about the responsibilities of event organizers. Yes. We have two type of events. We have special events, mm -hmm. and that is covered under the Public Order Act. Okay. And those ones include um, carnival, mm -hmm. a parade, street dance, celebration of traditional custom, a demonstration, Demonstrations, and all that. Yes. And those ones have been captured under the Public Order Act of 1994, where the responsibilities of the event organizers and the police have been spelled out. For example, you need to inform the police five clear days before, before, and then have to give them an idea of how many numbers you're expecting. The, the, the rules, the timing, and all that. Yeah. But if you look at this event, it is an entertainment event which is not captured under the Public Order Act. But it is an event in any case. But the practice is that in most cases, the event organizers write to the police. In some of the east where I have commanded, sometimes they write to us three days before the event. And when you check, you realize that they had done all their planning, all their calculations, and they only need the uniform presence but to give it that semblance of so, security. But, but then you allow it to go ahead. So if, if, if they is don't it, give enough it, preparation it, if, time. If that is where it is good to discuss some of these issues. Because if they have advertised the event, yes. they have sold tickets, the expectations are so high, mm -hmm. and then suddenly the police comes in, oh, stop this event. Then it becomes a tango or a distance With between you. the but police. But the police do not hesitate to do that when it comes to demonstrations, demonstrations and things like that. That, that. that is what I'm saying. That this is an important, this is a good point uh, that we are discussing this issue because okay. this we, have always, issue we have always if focused our attention on, on demonstrations. public order events. <laughs> but there are some other events that have hidden dangers yes. that we take for granted. But the event, the, the incident that happened during this award, is giving us an indication that we need to take a, a second look at some if of the yeah. you, you may need metal detectors yeah. at so, some point. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You have an, an enclosed area yeah. between a thousand to two thousand people. Yeah. What measures would you, with hindsight, yeah. what measures would you have put in place 
to ensure the security of the people and a, a, and the a safe uh, running of affairs of the event? First recommendation is to involve the police right from yeah. the planning stage. In other events in other countries, there's always a police liaison officer. Even for football, yes. uh, matches and all that. And but when those are events that they expect violence, usually. They expect there's a potential of violence. Then Foot, for every football event, matches, there's always for every a potential. Event, there's there a is potential a potential, there's violence. a hidden danger. hidden danger. So we need to start from that premise that okay. for every event where you are going to bring more than two or three persons, there's likely to be <laughs> a, a breach of the peace. That okay. is where we should start from. Okay. Now, if you start working with the police from the beginning, the possibility of preventing, because our mandate is to prevent crime. Yeah. And when we are unable to prevent, is where we trigger the, the law enforcement process. But if we want to protect life and property, and the police is involved right from the word go, then all the other arrangements in place would have been looked at, the checklist mm -hmm. worked out, and that will even give an indication to the police that this is the number of officers we need to deploy, whether we should deploy plain clothes officers who are not in uniform, exactly. in addition to uniform officers. Yeah. And then we will also look at the, the strength of the organizer's security, because I know that event organizers also have their, their own security, security. arrangements mm -hmm. and where we can come in to complement. But given yeah. the brand, I mean, I'm sure by next year, they're going to be calling you guys first because they want to protect their brand in terms of the actual organizers of this event. But on a practical level, when I was thinking of what transpired in terms of the brandishing of a weapon at a public event, the first thing that came to mind, you know, as a lawyer, is that the saddest thing that happens in these kind of occasions, if the gun does go off, is it never goes off on the intended party. Yes. It is always Ricochet. some seventeen-year-old sitting in the audience, yeah. some old woman, some Who's random that is not yeah. the target. Mm. So yeah. we have to get back. I mean, you're an, uh, an official, but we have to get back to what the law actually says about mm. whether you can brandish a weapon in public. And is it the Arms Act? Um, the the Arms and Ammunition Act. Arms and Ammunition Act. the Criminal Offences Act. Yeah. Yeah. Says that a person a shall not accept in accordance mm. with the terms of a permit. Mm. Granted under this act, um, with the prior consent of the Inspector General of Police, publicly display any arms or ammunition, ammunition or dis discharge a firearm or any other weapon in a public space, and the weapon may be seized or forfeited, and the consequences could be up to, is it two years in jail? Yeah. Or 120,000 Ghana CDs? Oh, yeah, license, license can, can be revoked. revoked. And your license yeah. can yeah, be revoked. But this case, as you said, has gone to court, yeah. might be quite serious because it was high profile. And so perhaps the judge might want to send a message. Do you think? I believe his um, permit has been revoked. The, 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 the case has been revoked. was holding was been revoked. I think those are issues that were presented before court, whether yeah. the gun is even licensed yeah. and all those issues are before court. So the discussion here, I believe, that will be broader than yeah, that event and then we'll look at the general yeah. picture without yeah. discussing specifics because the case yeah, is because court. it's in court, yeah. it might be falling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what do you say about that, that it's Contact. normally the person that, that wasn't even intended, that's the danger of brandishing a gun in public? Would you, you, see, you see, the law allows certain category of persons to own certain types of weapons yeah. under the civil category and it is a privilege. It's a privilege. It is not a right. That's why you need to apply. You need to go through some security checks and then you have a license to own it. Now if you own that weapon, it doesn't give you the right, that, the right to use it to threaten, brandish it, because you some Persons would apply for it because of the job they do. Okay. Some will want it for hunting purposes, and we know where hunting is done. Mm -hmm. So if you have that, not on a stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but if you are, and then some other persons are doing some kind of businesses where yeah. they might require that weapon protection in respect of the specific work that they are doing. Mm -hmm. Like lawyers, but, different people. Yes, <laughs> but 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 if you are using it in a way that can cause somebody to feel threatened, then that is where the question arises as to how 
the usage of the weapon and, and, can we and then the circumstances this, this that you're using it. By brandishing, it doesn't mean he, you have to be waving it. You just have to have it displayed publicly where other people can see. Is that considered brandishing? Or do you have to be waving it all around the you place? You see, the, 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 if you look at the law, even carrying it in a public place I is said an it. offense. Yes. Because I believe if I have a gun with a permit and yes. I walk into Accra Mall and I'm carrying it... Yes, it's an offense. Thank, thank you. It's an offense. So yeah. I want the public to... So it is that. very important we emphasize this. Because, because, because people have been saying, you have once you have weapon, a permit, so far as you, you didn't have wave it, it around... Next to you. Yes, but no. I, I know that you cannot walk about... It is the clear gun. in the... Even yeah. the Criminal Offenses Act okay. that it is an offense to carry a gun. Yes. And even beyond a gun, we have other offensive weapons. Yes. Okay. Missiles and other things to a public place. So I have two short offense, questions. Yeah. These event organizers in particular requested for police protection three days before the event. I'm not saying three days, but I'm that less is what I'm saying normally happens. Less than a week. Yeah, That's right. what normally yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many officers did you deploy? We saw police officers and military in riot gear. Mm. Is it normal for them to be wearing riot gear in an auditorium of that nature? In this particular case, the police officers were caught when tensions were oh, rising. Oh, so they were so not they, there. There were officers there, but they had to call for reinforcement, reinforcement. when the issue. So how many people came. were I, I will not be able to, to tell. Event. I will not be able to tell how many okay. police officers were assigned. Considering an event of a thousand people mm -hmm. or five hundred people, mm -hmm. how many officers would you recommend? Considering our recent possible terrorist threats as well. When you're having a gathering of so many people, what, how many people would you actually put man, man force, apart from intelligence? I'm sure you have police intelligence as well that will go beyond physical presence of seeing plain clothes or uniformed officers. Every police action is predicated or depends on the situation. You assess the situation, you look at what is happening, and you deploy accordingly. So we always say adequate police officers. So we don't have specific numbers. numbers. So you, you could have 10,000 persons at an event, and you could have four or five police officers well covered, and then also detectives as part of it. You could have an event where there are 100 people. But if you look at the background, the history behind that event, for example, if you take a football match between Accra House of Hope and Asante mm. Kotoko, you would definitely have you to you, you definitely have to raise that bar of security presence than mm. maybe a football match between some other clubs that we know are not traditionally uh, antagonistic towards each other. But so it to raise that level in terms of apart from you know the possible yes. antagonism, yeah, it, it's it really because is. Guns I mean, it just shoots up the danger. No, yeah, it's a, it's guns. Mm. Once you introduce the gun, mm. it raises the the security level to an, to where people should be very concerned, especially yeah. when we are people Public. an event which is basically entertainment. Mm -hmm. We have high profile persons who are being invited. Yeah. And then the place is well covered in terms of accessibility, the access points. That place is not an ordinary place where you say that people can just come in. Access controls, measures are there. Then you carry a gun there. That, 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 that becomes the intention of why you should carry Were a gun. Which, which goes measures there? Were of course. Were scanners there? No, 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 no. We're not That's talking not about access control measures. You have a ticket. You have a you ticket. Identified your, your, your ticket is inspected. You yes. are admitted. So and then you are ushered into you are there, places where you have to You are sit. there for yes. a specific purpose, yes, yes, supposedly. Yes, yes. So as Amanda was saying, that it's going to come to a time we're going to need to have gun checks, yeah. especially yeah. on performers, because um, any time we hear you see, this, in it's other just events, artists. Even in, uh, in outside the country, even before the event, after having done the security assessment, there are always announcements saying that, look, guns are not permitted at these premises. You even get enter, and the entrance, it is displayed. No gun, no offensive weapon. No, Just yes, like maybe you are boarding an aircraft and or something sometimes like that. they don't even allow glass bottles. And yeah, of course, of course. Because so that becomes a deadly weapon. Yes, it becomes a weapon. Used, right? Yes, it can but be used as a weapon. I want to go back to, so the event mm -hmm. organizers, was it... Um, Poor planning on their part. Is it, I listened to the CEO, the lady, yes, I haven't heard who said speaking. that they have been in this business for, and we all know that they've been for 20 years. years. 20 years. And oh, I think true. that sometimes complacency sets in. Nothing has happened before, so it's not going to happen. But that is a danger in security. 
And so our, our culture is changing. Brother. Yes. It's 20 and years ago, I mean, this might not have happened, but yes. perhaps, especially quite sadly, when, it's the culture. Yeah, especially especially when, when you have this rivalry and before the event, you knew yeah, that Tawale yeah. was clearly exactly. So I, I, I would have thought that they would have taken security a lot higher. Yeah. And they know? have worked closely with the police to look at all the They'll possibilities. They will never do this again. The hot ifs, what, the hot <laughs> ifs, what, what their if own security people should have been prepped. If you watch the videos, and it's very, it's very easy for us sitting at home to judge, mm. but you see that the security, the higher security were overwhelmed. And yeah. it appears that the, the police, police were on the back as well. They were, were back retreating. Up. They, were, they were retreating. <laughs> is it? Is it? Um, and having reflected if on it, went, I wasn't there. I'm sure it's embarrassing there. for you. But, but if you for look you at watch. it, if you look at it, there should have been some level of access control, especially accessibility to, to the, the stage. stage. Yes, so I you don't make it an open space where I can just you know, get up and walk straight to the absolutely stage. Absolutely right. And there should be some from control. The back. Yes. In so international they, events, they saw yes. of this nature, yeah. everything is scripted right up to how a person walks up to the stage. It is pre-planned. You keep saying this. And, yes. and, 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 there's, there's saying always... and we are emulating an international no, no, event. Yes. No. International events, there have been occasions where performers have rushed the stage. And it's only when they get onto the stage that they are removed. But when you have a body of about 20 Kanye West, then there was no one on the people, stage to push these guys that, back. That is too many people to rush the stage. The first maybe five could have got on, but after that it should have been stopped. Yeah. But even the even the even it had happened outside, it doesn't yeah. mean that we should all say that it has happened. No, so but she is saying it. that. And I'm we saying that yes, it doesn't yes. happen outside. Oh, okay. Because like you mentioned before, one person was coming with two people, accompanying with three, accompanying with five. Was, at that point, it that. should have been stopped. Yeah. At some and Shatter didn't walk from right the front row. He, he came from, from the way back. the back. So it means security should have honed in and blocked the rest behind him from getting to the stage. So security failed us, the organizers failed Or maybe failed there would have been yes. the best practice should have been a rehearsal. But the people themselves, well, the I doubt they rehearsed. I doubt the know, performers well, the award winners to know that, well, these are the protocols. If you are going to receive an award, you go in there alone. Oh. You're not going there with your fans. You're oh, not going there with this. But sometimes, because of the emotions yeah, attached, uh, people get carried away. Oh, the, the fans get carried away. the Ministry of Tourism take the, the event and they manage the event. Because it is a Ghana event. But I think yeah. that, well, the organizers have the track record. <laughs> Something has gone wrong. Yes. And I'm glad that they are working. highlights what that they are working, working with the police. the police. So that uh, yeah. Yeah. we can prevent some of these things going forward. Yeah. So aside from the, the danger of guns, the lack of efficient, effective security, in-house security, what about access? When the police get involved, do they ask about access and exit, exit and entry points? Those because are the basic... I'm, I am informed reliably that there were only two. But two I entry know points. the conference center has various. This was, was this was a, a it was in a structure. Yeah. Yes. So maybe those structures are what we have to look at going forward. Yes, because, because they are uh, not designed for for that number of, yes. of persons. Yes. Especially, even with the environment we are in now, there is a high level of uncertainty. We know that some terror, you know, terrorist yeah. attacks yes. are targeted at yeah. crowds because they want to. Uh, maximum uh, maximum so, destruction. Yes, and then yes. get so 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 we should not the the, the, the key recommendation and what we are saying we should not we should stop taking things for granted. Yeah. And what about the pepper spray? Who sprayed that? But I think it is also uh, for now it's an offensive weapon, and they are looking for that person to oh, also so, face. The so law. it wasn't the police that did it as crowd control. No, from the information we no, have, no, it's not. No, but 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 it would have been. Out of place for the police to have used that pepper spray in, in that an enclosed, yes. except maybe it was a person to person contact. Mm -hmm. So that is also an issue that which you remember the stadium disaster, yes, where May there were issues of yeah. the Bay 9 disaster, where the, the, there was a committee and recommendations were made. And fortunately, those recommendations have been to a very large extent followed. That's why we've not had any serious of, uh, events, any serious incidents since then at since the stadium. Then. So, uh, as I said, these are lessons learned that we need to take seriously. Pepper and spray is an offensive weapon. Yes. Of course, it's yes. be registered. It's a weapon. So, ladies who have pepper spray to prevent themselves from getting... You see, yes. I can hold... What happened? I can hold a bottle of uh, This can Coke. be an offensive weapon. Yes. Okay. I can hold this and it's meant to contain either a drink or water. But if I tend to use it 
To smash your head. To smash the head. Oh. <laughs> Touch okay. wood, yes. If okay. I tell them, it becomes an offensive weapon. Okay. So it is not the weapon per se, but how it is can be the possibility right. of being used to hurt somebody that okay. makes it an offensive. Worst so, case, sorry, worst case scenario in this Sakodi and um, what who was the other guy? Hey, Shatawale. Shatawale, okay. Shatawale and Stoneboy. Worst case scenario in this, you know, the Arms and Ammunition Act says that worst case, you know, people could face up to five years in prison. Um, do you think that's a possibility or should we leave it to the court? Um, let, us, let us leave it to the judicial discretion. Okay. Well, thank you very much, ACP Eklu. It's been very interesting and now when we are attending events, we will be more aware of our surroundings and if there are a, not enough security, I will not enter. This is a yeah. wake-up call. For, for all us of us to also take our personal security, security seriously, we should not follow the crowd. Once the marketing hype, the advertisement going, don't get carried away. Think about security first. Mm. That's the key word that I want Checklist to Checklist yourself as an attender. Sure. Okay. Yeah, all right. So I hope the public has taken note of the issues raised here so that we can demand more protection at these public events. And we will be back after the break. There seems to be a lot of uncertainty in the world economy today. The Brexit debacle has made nervy spectators of us all, and now tech giant Google has pulled Huawei's license following an executive order by the US President Donald Trump, which would see Huawei devices denied access to Android apps. What will this mean for dealers and users of Huawei phones in Ghana? And is there an opportunity in the melee for local app developers. Joining us today is Mr. David Bolton, partner and technical director of Soft Tribe and a traditional ruler known by Nana Otuam of Nana Obatan of the Ikumfi Otuam traditional area. David, you're welcome. Thank you very much. This is captured by women. How mm. does this executive order by Donald Trump affect Huawei users in Ghana? Well, uh, initially there's going to be no uh, impact uh, because it will not affect existing phones in the, in the ecosystem. Uh, what, what they're essentially saying is that new Huawei phones that are being manufactured are not going to be licensed for certain aspects of Google's uh, technology, of the Android technology. Okay, but I heard that some people with Huawei phones, when they traveled from Ghana, and this is very recent to the mm -hmm. US, were unable to roam with their Huawei phones. Well, that's, that's um, a carrier issue. So okay. if, if uh, you know, they, can, they can decide to block certain okay. uh, carriers uh, if, if you move from one country to the next. And uh, they can identify based on the IMEI number on Whether the phone. Whether it's a Huawei phone. Yes, yes. So, in America, they can decide to play some dirty tricks and, okay. and, and, and lock you out. Yes. And quite crucially, you know, these Google apps, you know, mm -hmm. everybody loves the apps and yeah, then yeah. Android and then going to the store to download. Mm -hmm. If, for instance, you can no longer, I mean, I, I'm assuming you're the expert, you can tell me, but mm -hmm. if you can't access these Google apps that are downloadable by the second, like, you know, minutes right, are downloadable, right. wouldn't it be normal to then switch to another carrier or...? Uh, well, the interesting thing is that Huawei has been aware of this for some time. Oh. You know, th this trade war has been going on for quite a while. If, if you notice, um, I think Huawei's uh, MD in Canada was arrested. Was, was arrested. You know, there, there's been yeah. a the lot of... The daughter of the owner. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. There, there was been, there's been a whole lot of uh, tension building up and brewing over the last uh, few years, in fact. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not really between um, Google and Huawei. It's, it's this whole US and China. Donald Trump uh, and uh, China uh, trade war that, that's, that's going on at the moment. And it, it's, it's a lot of um, posturing and positioning. Uh, it, essentially, what's really behind it is the technology, mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in particular, the 5G technology mm -hmm. that is about to be released. See, people don't realize how significant uh, 
the jump is going to be between what we have as 4G now and 5G. 5G. Can you explain um, what the jump well, is going to involve? I think uh, the easiest way to explain it would be in downloads. We all download things off the internet. Uh, let's say in 4G, let's say it will take you maybe 10 minutes to download a movie. In 5G, it's going to take you three seconds yes. wow. to download that same movie. You see the thing? So that, that's the, the significance in terms of um, the, the bandwidth. But it, it's not just downloads. It, it's going to open up a whole world of opportunity. Because now if data can be freely and, and quickly moved around, it means that um, we can start using uh, internet for real-time applications. Yes. And how does this tie into China's 2025 vision uh, to dominate the emerging digital technologies market in general? Mm -hmm. Well, they've already, they've already got there. Okay. That, that's the reality. So, they, so they've passed they've, the vision they've like been, way they've ahead. They've been planning this for a long time. Okay. So what's happening now is it's, it's basically um, a, a gut reaction from America to try and slow down this, this um, Pace. It's, yeah, it's essentially it's, it's the new arms race, it's a new space race yeah. uh, where we're dealing with, with well, technology. Why has the US been so slow to get on this 5G? Because I was in mm -hmm. Australia last year and they had some 5G spots where you could test it. So right. Asia right. is moving fast to 5G and mm -hmm. I don't know why US is dragging its feet. Um, you see, the US has traditionally been fairly lazy with technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. If, if you look at... Um, even the, let's say automobiles, the automobile industry, you know, they, they were fairly happy having these huge gas guzzlers, big V8, <laughs> six litre engines and things when... F-150 uh -huh, trucks. Exactly, when the Japanese and Europeans were looking at being more efficient. So they were using 1.8 litres, two litres, even going down now to one litre engines mm -hmm. and making them so efficient and so fuel efficient and so um, environmentally friendly as well. And it, it's only now that the U.S. has realized that it's important. And even now, Trump is still denying that there's, there's uh, climate change. But, but for <laughs> instance, is there, as the U.S. would argue, an unfair uh, competition strategy that's mm -hmm. de developed by China? Or should the U.S. not say that because they were doing it for years let's, and let's then now... Let's be realistic. Yeah. Where th there's no fair trade. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a concept that is just a fallacy. Mm -hmm. You know, every Whoever country... has the power. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the fact is, America has been losing that power. They've ceded the power to China. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, they've moved all their factories to China. Um, even the iPhones and everything we're using, it's all manufactured in China. Mm -hmm. Because labor, labor is extremely expensive in the uh -huh, US. Exactly. Quality of life, you know, so it's, you just couldn't even do that in the uh -huh. US. You would have to move it out. Yeah. And what, what America didn't realize is they thought that China was just going to remain the factory of the world. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize that China was also gearing up to become the thinkers of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and learning from US contracts, etc. Yes, the whole process, yes, the whole cycle. That's it. Yeah. And, and in terms of uh, sheer numbers, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You see, if, if you can put, let's say, a thousand programmers to work in America, you're going to pay each programmer maybe $100,000 a year plus. You can put one million programmers oh. <laughs> to work in, mm -hmm. in, in China, mm -hmm. pay them a fraction of that money and produce the same output uh, per, per person. But, but, but is this also to do with the fact that China believes, because you know, I've just been to China for like six weeks, but mm -hmm. it seemed they were like slightly different. You really get this, the sense when you're in China that they believe in the collective. Exactly. And they're yes. all working towards something, even if they are all part yeah. of... You know, I really felt that, yeah. Yeah. oh, this is not like individualism yes. sort of thing. Yes. So there's does a national that, pride. There's a, a national, national pride, yes. So and I ask this, mm -hmm. software developers, mm -hmm. are they based on their applications on Google? Um, is it operating system? Generally, what's, what we do as software developers is... We develop on whatever platform happens to be the, the, the most prolific. Okay. So at the moment, it is Android and iOS. All right. Right. Now, in, in, in our part of the world, in Africa, Android accounts for over 80% mm -hmm. of the market share. Even though iPhones are all flashy and everything, but it's less than 8% of the market share in Africa. You see the thing. So if, if you're a smart developer in, yes. in this part of the world, you'll, you'll be developing be specifically for Android. Android. And could yes. that be part of the US's thing? Because they want to support the um, um, iOS, the iPhone. Well, that, that's, that's one, one thing, yes. Because it's, it's down to sales. I mean, yeah. Huawei has got is. the market share at yeah, the moment. Yeah. 
But what they don't realize is Huawei has been preparing for this. Mm -hmm. These are the things. So, so if do they have something comparat comparative to exactly, Google that they exactly. can use without yes, the use of Google. Yes. You right. see, and if, if you look at the, the release from, from uh, Google, essentially they're, they're not cutting off Android support entirely. They're cutting off certain aspects. So th things such as Updating. access to the Play Store to get All to right. the apps. The but Huawei, Huawei <laughs> has its own version. <laughs> Huawei has had its own version it of the Play Store. Well, we it has its own Play Store. It's every every yeah. Huawei has okay. it now, yeah. okay. and it's been there. Just that we don't we don't use they it. Call it Play Store. No, it's, it's um, called an H. I've forgotten what H, H something. Yes, <laughs> yes. But all they need to say is, I hey, know, just right? instead of yeah. using the Play Store, <laughs> use this store. Okay. Sort of thing. And, and it's but it still doesn't have everything. Yeah, they have a Huawei app gallery as well. But what you don't realize is Huawei is the second largest manufacturer of phones. Yeah. And in China alone, just just look at the market, you sort of thing. And, and in Europe, they're, they're huge. So this couldn't so actually pinch them? It, well. it will be a very, in, in fact, long term, it will probably be a boost for Huawei. Yeah, because, because they, they help them develop yes, their software. Yes. If they decide to release a full-blown operating system, yes. it could signal the end of of uh, Android, as we know it. This could backfire look and what build, build out space. But there will be collateral damage. Yeah. I mean, in, in small, small quantities. Well, those I mean, who are already users who cannot... They'll buy new phones. Sure. No, 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 not everyone can. Don't, let's not assume. Yeah. Some people do not buy, cannot buy new phones. And can Some I ask you about um, this time. talk of espionage? You know, the mm -hmm. US is very good at propaganda and saying that, you know, when uh, <laughs> Yahweh roll this out, there'll be nothing but, like, you know, stealing of data, etc. <laughs> and in the UK, for instance, mm -hmm. um, to re you know, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, faced a huge backlash because everybody was like, you know, they're just going to use this to steal information, etc. What are realistic. your views who, about who espionage, etc.? Who spies more than America? Yeah, I Americans. wouldn't know. I would Chinese. Know. <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> 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 Chinese for sure. So but do, could this be a vehicle, like a Trojan horse, to really steal the world's information, really? I mean, well, the thing is, look, the information is out there anyway. Right now, if you... No, but it's not all information. We're talking about MI6, MI5 information. We're talking about information that can really do something. Well, if, if, it, it, if it's that... It's not going to be it's that important, If it's that important, that information would be secured yes. on discrete networks. Yes. Yes. It would not yeah. be it accessible. Not be on, on but why phones? is mm -hmm. a lot of um, the people who oppose what Theresa May is doing in London, mm. they're saying this will be the Trojan horse. If you allow this technology, you know, like, as if the information could just be carried away with the vehicle of this technology just taking right. over everything. I mean, there must be some concern about well, that. Well, because they did it in the past, so now they're afraid of it happening to them. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it, look, every, every country that's worth its sort is, tr is trying to protect its own interests. Yeah. Right, and, and especially a powerful country. They are always going to act in their own self-interest and try and dominate, you know, over, over another, another uh, country and so on. So it's, 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 that's how it's been for centuries. In fact, for thousands of years. You know, it's, it's all about Whoever world dominance. Whoever's the toughest that, that, that's, yeah. that's how it happens. Survival of the fittest. Exactly, they say. yeah. yeah. And, and the, the world has allowed China to become so powerful. Now they've realized, hey, we, we need to do something about it. It's we too need, late. We need them in terms of we need the technology and yeah. it's cheaper, etc. Yeah. It, it's too late now. China is a major player on the world stage. And there's nothing we can do about that. But what about this U.S. tariff? I mean, 60% or something? Can you explain mm -hmm. that more to our viewers? Um, what the U.S. has done and, and, and what China's going to do in, in, in terms of retaliation? Well, well, the thing is that what, what's happening is the U.S. is looking at certain sections of industry and then imposing these tariffs on, on, on imports. Now, how, how high are the tariffs? Uh, I don't know the specific details. I think it's like as high as 60% or something. I don't know the specific details, but at the end of the day, whatever tariff you introduce, it is your own population that's going to be paying that. So yeah. you're actually hurting yourself. You're not hurting China. Yes. You see the thing. So it, it's, it's, it's self-defeatist. It's, it's, it's not going to result in um, a reduction. Well, even if it results in a reduction of imports, it means that basically America is not ready to start producing those items. At, at, the price, price. at that price, yeah. you see the thing. So you're, you're forcing people to pay more for, for their goods and services now. And it's just going to hurt America. And how is China going to retaliate, if at all? Well, the, the same thing. I mean, the thing is, China, because they are, they are the major exporter, 
they could say, okay, um, every iPhone that's going to be exported from China, we are imposing a 100% tariff. You've doubled the price of iPhones, iPhones. potentially. And who needs iPhones more than an American? Exactly. <laughs> the are they thing. still producing the, um, the iPhones and the manufacturing in China? They are. Yes, they, they are. are. Yes. There's no way they can ever yes. stop. They can't Perhaps easily they move. To You'd have to shut down the whole operation and move it back to, back to America. You know, it, it, it will be a disaster. Okay, so presently, owners of Huawei phones and Huawei users in mm -hmm. Ghana should not worry at all. about using I'm a, their I'm phones. I'm a Huawei user. I've been a Huawei user for the last uh, two, <laughs> two and a half, three years. That's some serious you know, advertisement. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Huawei for the last five. And you've been comfortable with it. Yes. They just keep yes. changing. All right, great. Yes. great, you know, great. They're, 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 they're as good as... I have an iPhone as well, but I haven't phone. even used it in the last oh, few years. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you use a Huawei, you don't need an iPhone. Really. Yeah. Is it battery saving? I mean, what is the advantage? Not just that. Fact, you don't want me to advertise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 we don't need to go into the specifics. But but it is friendly. It, it is user-friendly. Um, yeah, yeah. user yeah. 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 You see, it, it, this image of China producing cheap and inferior products is a thing that we need to quash because it's no longer the case. Yeah, it's no longer up. the case. Yeah, mm. crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been an exhausting discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we have no uh, fears to have about uh, using our Huawei phones. Not at all. Awesome. Thank you very much, David Bolton. Nana Obatan. <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you, you for joining Thank us you. on Captured by Women. We'll be right back from the break. So ladies, what has been the high point for you in today's discussions? Uh, for me, the high point was the clarity with which the police representative spoke about what, should, what steps should be taken to ensure our safety at public events. It seems like they do have a, a plan, and if we adhere to it, we could avoid future situations. And I think, um, as Amanda said earlier, we we'll probably need to have heightened security like gun control or metal detectors to ensure that no dangerous, deadly weapons are brought into the venues. Yeah. Amanda? Um, the high point for me was just the intellectual discussion on US-China trade talks or, or trade war, should I say, um, and how, if at all, it affects Ghana, but more focused on just, you know, international politics and um, it's a survival of the fittest in terms of, you know, everybody's always going to try and be on top and how that discussion is going with China and the US. That was quite fun. Yeah. Um, for me, the flooding issues and how we are personally responsible to be compliant, each compliant to the rules and regulations as laid down by the planning authorities, where the planning authorities as well have to do their duty as expected and not um, hoodwink contracts and pass it on and uh, we, en we end up being the sufferers long run. It's been great. Viewers, viewers, make a date with us same time next week on Captured by Women.